Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Authorities in South Australia say that one suspect is in custody this week and that they are currently searching for another, following a chaotic and dangerous botched ATM heist that almost left a police officer with serious injuries. The whole thing began just after 3 a.m. on September 15th, when a pair of robbers tried to break into an ATM machine at an ex-convenience store in the Adelaide suburb of Golden Grove. The attempt was extremely brazen. After pulling up outside in a stolen Subaru, the men were captured on surveillance video as they smashed their way inside with a sledgehammer. One of them then got to work trying to cut their way into the cash machine using an angle grinder. Unfortunately for the would-be robbers, the job ended up being bigger than they anticipated. A full seven minutes later, they were still working away when police responded to the scene. That's when things went completely sideways. Upon seeing the officers, the thieves quickly abandoned what they were doing and went to flee the scene. One of the men was chased down by a pair of officers and placed under arrest. However, the second suspect managed to get back into the car. As he reversed, with the driver's side door still partially open, he knocked the officer to the ground who was chasing him, eventually weaving through the police cruisers that had blocked off the scene to make his escape. Thankfully, it appears that the officer who was hit wasn't seriously injured, though it's easy to see how things could have turned out differently. The suspect arrested at the scene has been identified only as a 48-year-old man from Holden Hill, who is now said to be facing charges including attempted robbery, serious criminal trespass, theft, and unlawful possession. At the time of this recording, the second suspect remains on the run. Police say that they recovered the vehicle along with the angle grinder allegedly used in the crime from a nearby suburb, and that these items have now been sent off for forensic analysis. Anyone with information about the crime is being asked to contact South Australia Crime Stoppers. Officials in Portugal say that they are investigating the aftermath of a terrifying attack this week after a young boy went on a stabbing rampage inside of his school, a crime that left at least six people injured. The school in question is located in the municipality of Azambuja, about 30 miles northeast of the capital of Lisbon. The attack began at around 2.30 p.m. and is believed to have taken place following some kind of argument. According to local media, the suspect, who is just 12 years old, had gotten into a dispute with some other students earlier that day. At some point, he returned home and grabbed a knife and bulletproof vest, which he put in his backpack. These items were apparently not noticed when the boy returned to school. Once he was inside the building, he allegedly put on the vest, grabbed the knife, and began attacking his classmates. He was restrained by a staff member at the school, though not before he had allegedly stabbed at least six people. Neither the suspect nor the victims had been identified due to their ages. However, it's said that five of the victims were girls and one was a boy. All of them were between the ages of 11 and 14. While most suffered non-life-threatening injuries, one of the victims, who was stabbed in the stomach, is said to be in serious condition. A teacher also required medical treatment, though it's unclear if they were directly attacked by the suspect. At the time of this recording, the 12-year-old remains in custody, though it appears he has yet to face any charges. There are rumors that the suspect was involved in previous violent incidents at the school. However, this has yet to be confirmed or substantiated by authorities. Representatives from England's Bedfordshire Police say that they are investigating the aftermath of a disturbing triple murder this week after an 18-year-old man allegedly killed his own mother and two siblings in what has been referred to as an appalling crime. According to reports, police were alerted to the situation sometime around 5.30 a.m. on September 13th when they were called about a violent incident at a block of high-rise apartment buildings in the town of Luton. They rushed to the scene, located in the town's Marsh Farm area, where they made a horrifying discovery. Inside one of the units there were three people, all of whom were suffering from serious injuries. Emergency responders did what they could for the victims, however, sadly, all of them were pronounced dead before they could be taken to hospitals. They were quickly identified as residents of the apartment. 48-year-old Juliana Prosper, her 16-year-old son Kyle, and her 13-year-old daughter Giselle. Shortly after responding to the scene, authorities began canvassing the area for the suspect allegedly behind the killings. They arrested an 18-year-old man on a nearby street. 
he has now been identified as Nicholas Prosper, the son of Juliana Prosper and the brother of the other two victims. At the time of this recording, very few other details have been released about the case. We don't know what motivated the alleged triple murder, nor how the crime was carried out. The victim's injuries have likewise not been reported, though it's said that Nicholas Prosper was in possession of a knife at the time of his arrest and that he is also facing firearms charges. Friends, family, and community members in general say that they are stunned by the horrific act of violence. Tributes are now pouring in for the three victims, with those who knew Juliana in particular saying that she was a loving mother who always put others first. A GoFundMe has now been set up to help the surviving family members with funeral costs and other associated expenses. In the meantime, Nicholas Prosper remains in custody and has been charged with three counts of murder in addition to those aforementioned firearms offenses. Authorities in Italy released new details in an extremely disturbing ongoing investigation this week, announcing that they had arrested a 22-year-old university student after the bodies of two babies were found buried in a garden on her family's property. The case began on August 9th, when a grandmother in the community of Vignale di Traversetolo, not far from the city of Parma, was alerted to something in the garden of the family home. Her dog had dug something up, which she initially thought was the body of an animal. However, when she called the neighbor over, they immediately realized something far more sinister was going on. What the dog had unearthed was actually the remains of a newborn baby boy. Police were called and immediately began investigating. Horrifyingly, they discovered through an autopsy that the child had been buried alive. The situation was about to get even worse, though. As a search of the crime scene continued, they found the remains of a second infant. While the exact cause of death of both infants has not been released at this time, authorities say that DNA testing has since come back on the first set of remains. Through this, it was determined that the child's mother was the 22-year-old granddaughter of the woman who had made the awful discovery, Chiara Petrolini. According to Italian media outlets, Petrolini lives at the house with her parents. Prior to this, she was well-known locally as a babysitter and was said to be a, quote, model university student who was studying law. After more than a month of inquiries, police have released some of the details of their investigation. They now believe that Petrolini hid her pregnancy from everyone in her life, including her 22-year-old boyfriend, who was determined to be the father of the first deceased child that was found. She allegedly did this by eating extremely little during the time that she was pregnant, so that there were essentially no visible changes to her figure. It's alleged that Petrolini induced labor on August 7th while alone at home, after which she buried the baby in the garden. Almost no other information has been released about the other child who was found on the property, though police reportedly found evidence related to this in Petrolini's internet history, in which she searched how to terminate a second child. Making the situation even more unsettling is the fact that Petrolini apparently acted completely normally in the lead-up to the discovery of the remains. Just two days after allegedly burying the second infant in the garden, she went on a vacation to New York City with her parents. Indeed, this is what has unnerved many of the people who have since come out and spoken to police and the media. A friend told reporters that before leaving for the holiday, Petrolini exhibited, quote, a calm that now scares me. The distraught father of the second child likewise stated that he had no idea what was going on and that had he been aware, he could have taken care of the child. He pointed out that he had a job and that there would have been plenty of family support. At the time of this recording, Petrolini has been arrested on suspicion of infanticide and remains in custody. Currently, police say that their investigation is still ongoing and that they are working to determine the exact circumstances surrounding the crimes. Authorities in the Japanese city of Osaka say that they are searching for a pair of suspects following a violent robbery at a trading card company that ended with tens of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise being stolen. The whole thing began in the early morning hours of September 9th, when employees at the company in question were finishing up a live stream event at their offices in Osaka's Chuo Ward. According to reports, the company does not operate a traditional storefront, but rather sells trading cards through online auctions held over live stream broadcasts, a format that has become increasingly popular over the last couple of years. At around 3.30 a.m., the two employees, ages 30 and 29, had just wrapped up the event when suddenly things took a terrifying turn. 
Out of nowhere, a pair of men barged into the office wearing dark jackets, masks, and sunglasses. They were armed with bladed weapons and began to threaten the staff members. The two victims were tied to chairs while the weapons were waved in their faces. That's when the suspects revealed their intentions. They wanted as many of the company's expensive trading cards as they could get their hands on. Apparently, they didn't actually know what was valuable and demanded that the staff members help them. Still, in the end, they made off with 100 cards worth about 10 million yen, or about $70,000 US. They also took the victim's phones and the equivalent of about $1,700 in cash from the business before fleeing. Now, some English language news reports have stated that the stolen merchandise was Pokemon cards, though none of the Japanese news sources we came across specifically stated this. It's a fair bet considering how much the market for Pokemon cards has surged over the last couple of years, but still, just for the sake of accuracy, we thought we'd point this out. Anyway, at the time of this recording, authorities say that they are still searching for the suspects. Thankfully, the two victims were physically unharmed. Authorities in the Thai province of Samut Prakan say that they recently made arrests in an unusual case after the abbot of a Buddhist temple was the victim of an unhinged attack and the man allegedly behind the crime offered a bizarre excuse for his actions. The whole thing began on August 22nd when the victim, Prakru Prunyataro, showed up at a police station in Prasamachedi district saying that he had been the victim of a crime. Prakru, who is the abbot of a local Buddhist temple, said that he was receiving food offerings that morning about a half mile away from the temple grounds when an unknown man approached him from behind. Before he could react to what was happening, the man had run up and poured a liquid on top of him, after which he fled on a motorcycle. The abbot explained that as soon as the substance came in contact with his body, he felt a burning sensation and had to remove his robes. Luckily, witnesses quickly rushed to his aid and cleaned him off with water before taking him to a hospital. Once there, the doctor informed him that the liquid that had been poured on him had likely been mixed with some kind of acid. However, it wasn't concentrated enough to do severe damage. Following an investigation, police arrested the alleged acid attacker a couple weeks later on September 8th. The man, 44-year-old Klue Samwang, denied any involvement though strangely apologized and gave them the name of the person he said was really behind what had happened. That name was Chachai Chantantamo, a 39-year-old who just so happened to be a monk at the very same temple as the victim. When Chachai was arrested and questioned, he admitted to being the mastermind behind the crime and said that he had paid Klue 3,300 baht, or about 100 bucks, to carry out the attack on the abbot. However, he also offered a strange defense of his actions. According to Chachai, he never told Klue to use acid during the incident. Instead, he insisted that he had instructed him to use poop. In fact, he went as far as to accuse the abbot of lying about what had happened, stating that the so-called chemical burns he had showed police were actually just rashes from a previous shingles infection. While it appears the police have not officially weighed in on the validity of these claims yet, None of it changes the fact that Chachai still allegedly admitted to planning and ordering the crime. He stated that he had done this because the abbot had treated him badly for a long time and had recently excluded him from an important temple ceremony. Police say that Chachai and Klue are now each facing a charge of physically assaulting another person, leading to both physical and mental harm. If convicted, they're looking at up to two years in prison, a fine up to the equivalent of about $1,200 US, or both. Authorities in the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso say that they are investigating the aftermath of a heinous double murder this week, after a pair of sisters were abducted, tortured, and brutally killed, a crime that is believed to have been carried out due to a misunderstanding over a single photo they posted to social media. The incident took place on September 13th, when the victims, 25-year-old Hayeni and 28-year-old Hicheli Alves Porto, went to a party in the municipality of Porto Esperijao. The sisters were hanging out enjoying themselves by the Jauru River when at some point they took and posted this photo to social media. It would turn out to be a fateful decision. While the photo looks innocent, and by all accounts it was, that's apparently not how members of a local gang saw it. 
They mistook the hand gestures that the women were making with signs for a rival group known as the First Capital Command, or the PCC. During the middle of the party, a group of the offended gang members showed up and demanded to see Hayuni and Hicheli's phones. When they found the photo in question, they allegedly kidnapped both of them, along with their brother and another man. The victims were taken to a hideout, where the gang members allegedly revealed who they were and their motivations. That's when they began an hours-long campaign of brutal psychological and physical torture. The heinous events were apparently broadcast to a higher-up member of the gang who was in prison at the time and who apparently directed everything and watched from a contraband cell phone. We know all of this only because one of the victims, the unidentified man, managed to escape at some point. He alerted police who rushed to the area and encountered a truly nightmarish scene. According to local media sources, Hayuni, Hicheli, and their brother had all sustained horrific injuries. Their ears and some of their fingers had been severed, and they had been stabbed, and the girl's hair had been cut off. While the brother was barely alive and was able to be taken to a hospital for treatment, sadly, nothing could be done for the women. They were both pronounced dead at the scene. Despite the motive behind the crime, authorities say that the victims had no connections to organized crime and likely had no idea of the significance of what they were posting online. They grew up in a circus family and were apparently proud of their roots. Hayuni was an aspiring local politician and Hicheli was an Instagram influencer with nearly 90,000 followers. At the time of this recording, police say that nine people have been arrested and remain in custody. They are now facing charges including kidnapping and false imprisonment, torture, double homicide, attempted homicide, bodily harm, criminal association, and corruption of minors. Court documents in Switzerland have revealed horrifying new details in an ongoing murder investigation this week, months after a former beauty queen was brutally killed at the alleged hands of her abusive husband. The case began sometime back in February of this year, when the parents of 38-year-old Kristina Yoksimovich received an alarming call from the kindergarten that their two granddaughters attended. Staff at the school asked them if they could come and get the young children, because Kristina had never shown up that afternoon. After picking up the kids, Christina's father drove them to their home, located in an upscale part of the municipality of Binningen, just outside of the city of Basel. When he arrived, he was met by Christina's husband, 41-year-old Mark Rieben. Mark apparently did not seem concerned about Christina's absence that afternoon, and told her father that she sometimes disappeared. Instead of doing anything about the fact that she was missing, he invited her father inside for a drink. Over the next several hours, Mark allegedly continued going on with his daily routine, making dinner for everyone and eventually putting the kids to bed. At some point, they were joined by Christina's mother. As she sat at the kitchen table talking to Mark, Christina's father seized his opportunity and began searching the house. That search ultimately ended in a truly nightmarish discovery. In a basement laundry room, the worried father found his daughter's severed head inside of a plastic garbage bag. Further investigation by police unearthed a litany of other chilling details. They now allege that Christina was strangled to death and that her body was cut into pieces using a jigsaw, a knife, and garden shears. The remains were further broken down with a blender and were dissolved in a chemical solution. It's believed that Mark Rieben is the one responsible for all of this. The crime was shocking not just because of its brutality, but because to many outside observers it looked like Christina was living the perfect life. The 38-year-old was a former beauty queen who had won the Miss Northwest Switzerland pageant in 2003 and had gone on to be a finalist in the 2008 National Miss Switzerland competition. Since then, she had started her own successful business and consulting company that worked with aspiring models who wanted to follow in her footsteps. She was also a loving mother who posted constantly about her two young daughters and the joy that they added to her life. However, according to those close to Christina, things were far darker than they appeared. Friends who spoke with the media stated that she had been trying to leave her husband for some time and was afraid of him. Shortly before her death, she confided in them that he was physically and emotionally abusive and was trying to separate her from their daughters. At least some of this appears to have been backed up by police, who acknowledged that they had previously been called to the couple's home due to domestic violence. Given that all of this began back in February, you might be wondering why this is the first you're hearing of this case. Well, that's because it wasn't until this week that we really had any details about the crime. 
In accordance with Swiss privacy laws, not much information was revealed to the public at the time of the incident. That only changed because Mark Rieben, who was arrested the day after the discovery of Christina's remains, appealed to a court to be released from custody this week. That appeal was denied, and with it, this new information was disclosed. That being said, it appears that Mark Rieben has not officially been charged in connection with the case, as the investigation is still ongoing. However, he is the prime suspect, and police say that he has given contradictory and unsatisfactory explanations for his actions surrounding Christina's murder. According to reports, Mark initially stated that he had simply found his wife dead by the stairs in the house. He later changed that to saying that he had killed Christina in self-defense after she came at him with a knife. Police say neither of these stories match with the evidence found at the scene. At the time of this recording, Mark Rieben remains in custody, and the investigation continues. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a second to give a huge shout out to everyone who has made it this far into the video. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. If you found today's upload interesting and informative, we'd be honored if you'd consider liking and subscribing, as well as hitting the notification bell and selecting all notifications to stay up to date with our latest releases. If you're looking for additional ways to help support the channel, we'd love to have you join us over on Patreon. Patrons get ad-free and early access to all of our content, as well as four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. You can learn more at patreon.com slash crimezone, where you'll also find some of the fine folks whose names are currently on screen. All that being said, we understand that not everyone has the means to support financially, and that's totally okay. We appreciate every like, sub, share, and comment that you send our way. Once again, thanks so much everyone, and take care.